Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back once again to Samuel Adams Returns. Those anti-federalists, they did. They got it right. And isn't it amazing that uh, here it is. Uh, they did. I mean, look at what happened this past week. We were always wondering, you know, as we look through those pages and and times and history as to, my goodness, you know, why is it that we keep doing the same things over and over and over? Well, what we're going to do today is exactly what I promised you last week, is that we are going to have two gentlemen with us, uh, David and Daniel, and we're going to be speaking with them about their life. Uh, they are, their heritage is Romanian. And I'm going to let them explain how they got here and um, a little bit more about that. But before I do that, what I'm really interested in doing, because as you know, I've done programs in the past on the doctrine of the lesser magistrate. I'm being asked uh, by different groups of people to really start speaking about that a whole lot more than, um, than just doing it on a program. There's a pastor out of Michigan that he actually wrote the book that has made a lot of splash that's out there, so I always reference him. And then there's some other people that have actually done some studying on it out of George Fox University and how to apply it to what we're doing today in a Christian ability to interact in the political environment. So uh, those are the types of things that I'm preparing. But in doing that, and in doing some other uh, research and some legal work that I've been looking at relative to what's why is it taking us so long on this whole abortion insanity, I was captivated by something out of Psalms. And these folks brought to my attention uh, Psalm 94, and there's something here that I just wanted to share with everybody because I think it's critical that we take and look at our real Christian heritage in that regard. So Psalm 94, starting at verse 15, it goes like this, But judgment shall return unto righteousness, and all the upright in heart shall follow it. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. When I said, My foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. In the multitude of my thoughts within me, thy comforts delight my soul. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by a law? They gathered themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemned the innocent blood. But the Lord is my defense, and my God is the rock of my refuge, and he shall bring upon them their own iniquity, and shall cut them off in their own wickedness. Yea, the Lord our God shall cut them off. It's pretty powerful, especially when we think about all the different things that are going on. So, folks, with that, I want to make an introduction of David and Daniel, and you guys give us... Uh, your last name, and uh, we'll start from there. So, David. Thank you, Tom, uh, for having us on uh, the show. And, um, yeah, my name is David Serban. And I'm Daniel Serban. Yeah, and uh, we uh, wanted to talk to Tom about some of our experiences uh, <clears throat> growing up in a former communist country of Romania. Uh, we came here, I was 10, and he was... I was 7 when seven. I came. 7, yeah. So, um you know, just from our memories and from what my parents have told us along uh, the years uh, of their experience, too. Uh, and um, it's, um, you know, it's 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 hard to see because we came to this country for freedom. That was, you know, I remember my um, dad would say, you know, in America, you know, you have private property, you have a, you can have a private business and nobody can, you know, <clears throat> take that away from you. Nobody can mess with you. Um, cause everything was government owned over there. So that, even that concept to me was, you know, it, it sounded so cool, you know, to have your own sure. place without getting messed with. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, so just, just with that though, you guys are businessmen here in the Cleveland area. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So Daniel, what, what is your business? Where is it located? 
And, uh, you know, what, what are you guys up to with that? So, Oh, we're, uh, we own uh, Perla Pierogies. Uh, we are in uh, Parma on State Road, uh, 5380 State Road in Parma. Um, and uh, we make pierogies um, for the masses. <laughs> yeah, great. Great. Yeah, That's we try excellent. To, we try to keep it very traditional, uh, although it's not a per se Romanian uh, specialty. Uh, it's an Eastern European thing, and mm -hmm. uh, people love it. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, thanks. You know, that's that's good. So the the whole pursuit of you know the American dream was all part of it, and is, that's one of the things that you guys heard while you were still in Romania, Romania that yes. your parents were saying, "Hey, look, you know, we can get there." And, and so, what was it then in your youth? Because I remember when we first met. Uh, first off, you guys are, are uh, believers in Jesus, as I understand. Amen. And that was yes. that, you know, were you guys in church in Romania? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. We so we'll talk church. about some of that. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. interesting. And then, uh, so as young people, what were some of the experiences that you, you had there? Well, our family was involved in, uh, <clears throat> as you would say, uh, Bible smuggling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which was illegal to distribute Bibles. There. Yeah. Um, so think about it, you know, considering the Bible as as dangerous as, you know, drugs or, or you know, arms contraband. or mm -hmm. any contraband, uh, it was in the same category. Yeah. So, uh, because, uh, you know, the Bible is the word of God and it's, um, it's the truth. And that's one thing they, they try to, you know, um, make people believe lies instead of the truth. So mm -hmm. it was all... And then, you know, freedom is, is found in the Bible, and that's the message of the gospel. You know, it brings freedom to people. Yeah. It changes their minds, their hearts, uh, transforms people. <clears throat> and um, another thing the Bible is against is fear. So, you know, and that was how they controlled the, the population there. It, it was 23, approximately 23 million um, people. You know, that's a good-sized number of people. Yeah. Um, and it was all... Uh, they were all living in fear of the government and the dictator. Yeah. So when we look at it in comparison, you look at the state of Ohio has about 11 million people in it. Mm -hmm. So Romania was double, you know, a little over double the, yeah. the amount of people. Yeah. So when we look at that, then yet the, the fear mechanisms that we're experiencing right now are yes. similar in some ways. Then That's what we're seeing. Yes. That's what's scary. And then yeah. we want to just let Americans know that, you know, we don't want them to get to, you know, where, what our family experienced there. So. Sure. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. That That's really, you know, when you look, start looking at all the different parallels oh, yeah. in life. Oh, yeah. A lot of patterns. You know, you, you, yeah. You, you sit there and yeah. you go, man, you know, what, what are the little nuances yeah. that capture? So a couple of things that really uh, are interesting to me, because I, I always say that there's no liberty without the liberty that Jesus gives, yes. uh, first and foremost. I mean, he... He promised that to us, so that's always something that we know yes. uh, that's there. And it, it does. It <laughs> renews the heart and renews the mind. And so when people start understanding that liberty. Where, so you, did you guys leave uh, before the, the uh, let's call it the Cultural Revolution that happened, that broke away from communism? Did you leave while it was still under communism? It was right after, after that. After that. Just yeah. right after. In 91. Okay. 91. Okay. And um, the revolution happened in 89, uh, Christmas right. time. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we went through that. And it was, um, in our city, it was pretty much war. I mean, yeah. there was bullets flying right above our house. And, you know, we had to <laughs> duck down at times. It, yeah. was, it was pretty scary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it was uh, because the son of the dictator was the mayor in our city. So okay. that's why it was a big, you know, it was a hot spot. There. Yeah. Talk about nepotism. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and there was you know rumors that they poisoned the he po poisoned the water. So oh, there's wow. all kinds we, of fear. We drank a lot of juice. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. So and my dad was really on the front lines. He went to the downtown and you know um, tried to um, uh, get the army on the people's side. Yeah, because at first they were given orders to just you know go through the crowds and just Mow try to down. disperse them and 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 run them down and whatever it takes. You know, yeah. but then it took. I think maybe a couple of days and, and they got on the side of the people. So. so help me understand that because, wait a minute. So your dad was smuggling Bibles. And so that meant that he already had a foundational belief in Christ. Now, was he a pastor or just a lay person? No, no they were just, just a lay person. Regular. You know, okay. So yeah. you get that. 
And so, you know, an elder or maybe a Dinkin or something like that. Not even. No, so no. just a parishioner. Yeah. So somebody. Oh, they did a lot of Sunday school. Um, and they actually okay. started. My mom actually started the Sunday school uh, movement in Romania because there was no such thing. It was brought from before. America, actually. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Isn't that something? She would go city to city and explain how to do Sunday school in, in the churches. Yeah. And she, wow. was, she was being watched for that very highly. And, you know, sure. they try to... Threaten to keep her out of high school and stuff like that. All kinds of stuff, yeah. Started. Yeah. So when you when you take and you look at that, and here's your dad <laughs> going down into the town, trying to talk to the military who could have, you know, shot him for, you know, insurrection or whatever they wanted to call it, rebellion, tyranny, tri- you know, or, or treason or whatever. Yeah. But yet he, he went, and he went in faith, but he went in justice and right i mean just wow that it's hitting me about psalm 94 right there who's going to stand up against the evil and we know that communism and socialism you know from our perspective and even biblically is is evil so i honor your dad first i think you know you guys that's way cool yeah Uh, but then that impetus that desire to do more than just go hit your knees in some back room he actually did something Mm-hmm. Did, he, did he talk to you guys much about that, or what were your observations uh, with him doing that? I mean, as a kid, you're probably going, "Whoa, Dad, where are you going?" <laughs> yeah, no, it's it was scary for the whole family, but you know, yeah. he knew that was the time to again, you know, being uh, oppressed for such a long time and and not being able to um, <clears throat> speak like against, um, you know, it was it was all. Um, fear of getting uh, reported because mm-hmm. you don't know we're talking here and maybe you actually brought us here to, you know, we think that you're on our side and you're yeah. actually part of the, you know, yeah, government, the, regime. Yeah, yeah, right. the, the yeah. secret police. And then you yeah. report us, we get interrogated sure. and then it can get really bad. Yeah. And they had informants in the churches as well. Yes. But I remember you guys saying that. Now, you know, so when we're looking at the churches, uh, and we'll probably get into that. Where are we at, Kat? On... What's that? Just... Oh, man, we got lots of time, three minutes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I remember you guys uh, mentioning that when we first met, and, and I'm sitting there going, yeah, I see that because, you know, I've been to communist and socialist countries before. That's right. And, and you sit there and you go, boy, you're always watching. You're p- trying to pay attention. You know, you try and read people's body language and all mm-hmm. of that to see, you know, are they really with yeah. you or are they not with you and all of those types of things. And – but – I guess the the thing that is interesting to me is that we're seeing some of those types of things in social media. We're seeing some of those types of things uh, before this administration, this new administration came into office. You know, so it's going to be interesting in that a lot of people don't recognize that because Americans have been lazily trusting is what I call it. And, And, Rightfully so. So I think uh, as we get into the next segment, we'll talk a little bit more about that, you know, in in relationship to the church and, uh, you know, some of those other experiences that you guys had with that. And where are you guys fellowshipping now? Uh, you, you mentioned to it earlier while we were talking. Oh, we're at the Olmsted Falls Bible Church. Okay, good. All right. You know, we like very, to... Very we'll, solid biblical it's church yeah. yeah we're yeah. blessed to be there great the yeah because i like to let other people know oh, the opportunity yeah. is where's a great place to fellowship oh, yeah. Yeah. and you know that the word is being it's preached freedom and, and solid yeah. gospel. liberty yes. gospel yeah. all tied together you know all of that so i think that's very very critical for mm-hmm. for folks to have that and so anybody that's in northeast ohio and uh, please you, come you, visit you, us yeah yeah, yeah do that but I'd you know also you know, where's your uh, where's your store located? Because you have a store and all yeah. of that too. Yes, yes. In so Parma, fifty three eighty State Road, Parma. Okay, so up on State Road in Parma, yeah. great. I mean, get your taste of pierogies over there. Yeah, and I've had some, and let me tell you, they're really good. I really, oh, thank you. I really enjoyed thank them. So, thank you. you guys, uh, that'll be really good. So, as we close out the segment, I want to just take and wrap it up. Is that <laughs> these are some of the things when it comes to religious liberty and that that uh, our founders looked at. Sam Adams, you know, he got in the mix on it at a couple different times. And the important part to remember is that he was a solid Christian. People don't understand that about him, but he was. And he and the Anti Federalists always said that the pastors need to do their jobs if we're going to maintain our liberties. 
And that's some of the things that was real critical in understanding the Anti-Federalist. And we're going to talk more about all these different relationships when we come back in the next segment. So we're looking forward to you being with us. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this second segment of Samuel Adams Returns, those anti-federalists. They did. They absolutely got it right. And I think I forgot to introduce myself in the beginning of that first segment. This is Tom Novolis, your host, and I'm just delighted that you are back here with me. And as I do always in this segment is uh, talk about who? Oh, yeah. Liberty Works Radio Network. Uh, They've had us on now for well over five years, and we're just honored to be a part of this programming. And please, as you look at their website, Look for that little button, that one that I always remind you to take a look at. Yes, it does say donate. This is a listener-funded network. It's all about your liberty, and um, we're excited that you're out there checking out the other hosts and hostesses and the live weekly programming. But always remember that it does take some fair change to keep a a network on the air and uh, keep all the equipment running and our ultimate producer over there, Dick, just happy as can be. So with that, let's get back to our conversation with David and Daniel. And uh, what we're talking about is uh, life experiences that uh, they had in Romania, family background, a little history we're going to get into in this segment, and some of the things that were going on in the, the churches there. Because as you heard in the sermon that I put up Uh, this past week, is that if we don't have righteous leaders, if we don't have leaders that are understanding that God is sovereign even over them, then we end up with bad government. And uh, that's very, very clear throughout all of history as well as scripture. And so, uh, man, you guys, that was, you lived under a bad leadership for, and your your parents did. Yeah, he was over 20 years that he was in power. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Oh, yeah. So what were some of the things that you learned from your dad that he had remembrances of that, like when I talked to my dad, I say, dad, what was going on back in your day and this, that and the other (laughs) thing? And what are the important things that I should remember, you know, for uh, family sake or history sake or stuff like that? What are some of the things that he may have, uh, you know, given you guys good instruction of or asked you to remember? What, what What's that? Well, um, one thing he said about um, communism, <clears throat> he said that, um, you know, it sounds good when, when, when you first talk about the ideal mm-hmm. part, the utopia, you know, it's yeah. everybody is equal, everybody shares their stuff. I mean, that sounds wonderful, right? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and then what happens, though? He said, um, uh, communism actually then kills the intellectual people, the smart people. Yes. Then it kills, you know, the the people that basically anybody that would be a threat to a a totalitarian regime, you know, Mm -hmm. because if you take out the, the, you know, the people that know about freedom and and they they would be fighting and they have a a chance to voice their uh, thing, then people might listen but <clears throat> if you take those guys out first then you got the the rest of the population is very easy to control so and one thing that communism ends up doing is actually destroying its own people yeah um it's not like a you know a, an empire that wants to be nationalistic and and uh you know get their people to be very strong and then they try to conquer other you mm-hmm. know stuff it's it's basically just living off the people the, the elite just sucking everything out of the people yeah. slowly, you know, right. and they do it, uh, they do it, you know, where it's at, it, it, there's steps, you know? Mm-hmm. So like it, it, and even there in the, in the worst time, he would still give the people crumbs of, you know, uh, you know, we'll get you, a um, you know, an hour of, of American, um, cartoons, you know, on, on Sunday or, or, oh. or something like that, you know, like sure. just to, to, get them oh yeah we're you know we have some things like yeah you know so as long as you don't you know totally break the the people all the way Mm -hmm. they'll kind of go along with it you know they'll accept their fate and not do anything about it because Mm -hmm. some people you know they had jobs that they didn't want to lose you know um Mm -hmm. 
you know, and, and that's what I'm seeing now. That, that's that's what's scary. It's yeah. it's about well, I don't agree with this thing, but you know, I got a job, and yeah. they're, they're going to kick me out if I start speaking yeah. against it. Yeah. So, and, but go ahead. Yeah, I, I can still have my ice cream, my steak, and my uh, you know Monday night football. Um, right. And that's fine, you know. Like people yeah. are just comfortable. They, they just they're, right. they're giving them just a little bit to keep distracted and keep on going. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It was interesting is that uh, I talked to an old Navy buddy of mine, uh, the, and he he ended up being pretty high up in the civil service side uh, in the Pentagon and in, in just overall when he went into civil service. <laughs> Now that he's retired, he's taken in. Uh, he, he gets to do a lot of different things. He and he, but he does these classes for the county that he lives in. And the county came to him says, you know, you interact with kids, you need to take the vaccine. He goes, well, you know, he's in mid seventies and all of that. And he's going, ah, well, you know, all right, I work with kids. You know, it's a flu shot and all of that. So, and when he and I were talking, I said, wait a minute. It's just, come on, you and I, what are the types of things that we talk about? And you're allowing a government entity to tell you you can't have your job mm -hmm. unless you take in, you take yeah. this vaccine. Or now the airlines, you know, who yeah. was a Qantas first, and now, you know, one of the uh, Middle East airlines and that are going, oh, you can't fly unless mm -hmm. you have your vaccine certificate. Yes. So it's like, wait a minute. Something's wrong. Yeah, here. yeah. So that, does that? I mean, it becomes incremental. Yeah. And those are some of the things that you know you guys you know are talking about, yeah. and it, it becomes very steps, very interesting. Different steps, and it's it's like a testing to see if we push. I think they have uh, think tanks where you know let's they they say okay if if they go it's, they already know the different scenario kind of like chess you know if if right. they do this move we're gonna act like this we're gonna let go a little bit you know mm -hmm. and then you know if people push back too hard we're gonna let go then little by little with other ways you you get them back to you know obeying and going towards sure. the yeah yeah they they act like they're in a bowl of jello or we're all in the bowl of jello and it depends on <laughs> you know what gets tilted pushed or whatever then yeah. they, you're still in the bowl of jello you yes, know what I'm yes. Saying? yeah and you can't eat your way out it seems sometimes until uh you know until you understand that real liberty yeah and, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in the third segment is that how did Romania come out of that so I want to kind of cue that up a little bit mm -hmm. but focusing a little bit more on how did the churches survive because that had to be the real um the the real hotbed for liberty to come about because as you're saying academics were gotten rid of uh, the 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 free thinkers mostly let's say the non there might have been some humanistic free thinkers because they're going wait a minute just out of reason alone this doesn't make sense but it would seem to me that you know, within the the context of that liberty that we talked about in the first segment, being mm -hmm. that liberty that's taught in the scriptures, what, how did that work within the churches that allowed then the the people within the churches to go? Wait a minute, we need to be more active because your dad didn't run down that street to help out unless he had a core belief that that was ultimately the right thing to do instead of just going kneeling in the back room. Yes. <laughs> so it gave that impetus to action. So mm -hmm. how did that work within the churches as you guys saw it, or as your dad relayed that to you, you know, being what, 10 and seven when you mm -hmm. came over. So you're a little, you know, you're so younger, a couple of years younger as all of that was going on. Mm -hmm. But what's your remembrance and what was it that they wanted you to, your parents <clears throat> wanted you to remember about that? Well, I, I think that, um, the church is in the Bible. It says nothing can defeat the church, right? Amen. Yeah. Not even the gates of hell. Um, yeah. So the church will thrive. That's what I want an encouragement to our listeners here. The church will thrive through the hardest times and it actually becomes stronger. Mm -hmm. So and there's a sifting, you know, of, of pe people that were weak or non-Christians that attend the church. They're not going to be with that because if it gets persecution, you don't want to why why stand up if that's not you your believe in it, yeah. yeah so right. that's what it was it was uh in romania there was a very small percentage of evangelicals mm -hmm. uh most of romania <clears throat> and it's uh interesting to say that in romania um even more recent i think they said that it's the country if i'm not mistaken the country that is the most christian 
uh, if you ask somebody on the street, are you a Christian? They'll mm-hmm. say yes. The, the biggest percentage right. of any country. Yeah. So everybody says they're Orthodox Christians, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, <clears throat> But we were persecuted um, because we were evangelicals. The Orthodox Church became corrupted with the government. So mm-hmm. it was it was hand in hand working with the priests. Mm-hmm. A lot of them were part of the, you know, secret police uh, and, and even, you know, the confessions and things like that. They would mm-hmm. probably use that against the people and, and okay. things like that. So uh, being, um, you know, a Baptist in Romania was not easy. They would call us the, in, in a mocking way, they would call us the repenters. Uh-huh. You know? So they, right. which is here, it's a good thing. If somebody yeah. says you're a repenter, I'm mm. very happy to hear every that. Day. Yeah, yeah, I, hope I, I, <laughs> repent, I repent every day. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Multiple but, times a day. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, but over there, it was a mocking thing. And yeah. they would they would do, um, you know, they would say uh, this information about who we are. Basically, mm-hmm. we would be told that we were part of a, a sect or a, a, a cult, cult that... Yeah. Um, does all kinds of, you know, weird stuff and stay away from those guys. They are, and this is coming from the government disinformation, you know, mm-hmm. um, so to the people. So we, my, my mom, you know, was asked at one point when she was 15 in school, are you a repenter? Like, are you one of those? And her answer, uh, whether admitting or saying no, yes or no, depended so much on her future. Because if you mm. were, yeah, then you would not be able to, get a, a good job you know you would like they would try to place you in in uh, uh marginalize you yeah just marginalize you and and make you uh you know uh suffer so mm-hmm. she said yes i am and from that day on she was she was continuously persecuted in school in her high school and um professors would make fun of her they would do all kinds of stuff publicly you know shaming yeah. you know yeah. so yeah. well honor your mom yeah, yeah. No, she's we, great. No, she's yeah, strong. You know, she's a strong lady. It, yeah. And my dad, too. So, yeah, yeah well, we're, definitely. we're happy. We're blessed with the parents. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> that's interesting because when we look at what has happened, and I've studied the church in America, you know, quite extensively. And, and when we look at, you know, what's going on in the, the reform movement, you know, Reformed Baptist, Reformed uh, Presbyterian, and then even some Reform. I call them Reformed Evangelicals, even though they don't they don't want to admit to the Reform part. <laughs> but you can tell by their preaching. It's like a good friend of ours that we were at in Lima. He. It's funny that uh, they're they're part of. Uh, oh boy, what's Mike? Where the. the Calvary Chapel. But I'll tell you what, he's probably the most reformed Calvary Chapel oh. preacher I've ever met. Yeah, <laughs> no, but no, there's a can't. lot of them. You know, that's really amazing. I've had the privilege of speaking at a conference that that he puts on, and these guys are, you know, pretty much right in the same, you know, discussion. Yeah. I mean, they'd fit in this discussion fabulously. But what we're seeing is that then with the larger churches, with the other evangelical churches, they've kind of gone down the slippery slope. They're not tattletaling on everybody, except when we start looking at the issue of uh, the the Chicom flu, you know, you're wearing a mask, you know, telling people, oh, you got to, you know, wear your mask to church. And it's like, come on, wait a minute, why are you, what, where is that liberty in Christ mm-hmm. uh, when it comes to, to all of that? It's sad to see. Yeah. It's very sad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that we'll, we'll take and we'll just follow up with that as we, you know, get mm-hmm. into the next segment. But, um, you know, I'm just trying to look at, give me about the, uh, 30 seconds of where you see the evangelic the non-reformed evangelical church or the mainstream churches in America at the moment. It's it's become, you know, if you watch the American Gospel, the movie, the documentary, the documentary. actually our good friend um Sean uh, Retch, he's the producer. He's actually in Cleveland. Tradition Studios. Tradition Studios. Okay. That explains uh, a lot of the the churches how they've gone you know, in the wrong path, and it's not about the true gospel. It's okay, so what's the name of that movie again? American Gospel. American Gospel. I highly recommend it to. Okay. It's it's hard to you know it's it's the hard truth about churches in America, yeah. and exposes actually yeah. a, a lot of stuff. Yeah. They also and, started their own streaming service, which is WatchAGTV.com. Okay. Yeah. All right. Like Netflix for Christians. So. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> good. Well, you know, maybe something that you know we'll have to make some connections with because instead yeah, of starting that. one. Maybe they're the guys that we would want to yeah. look at because oh, yeah. there's a lot of either 
uh, people like myself or the, these groups of pastors that I know that YouTube is kicking them off, like mm-hmm. I mentioned to, about Dr. Spalding. Yes. And it's like they're looking for another place to go. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, they're trying to understand what's going to make sense around that. So after the program, maybe we'll spend a few moments to kind of ferret that out. Yeah. But it comes down to the reality that Sam Adams understood what was going to happen. The Anti Federalists predicted virtually where we would be if we did not have that moral and virtuous people. Come on back in the next segment. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this third segment of Samuel Adams Returns. Those Anti-Federalists got it right. This is Tom Novolis, your host. And I want to welcome back my Screaming Eagle friends down there in Lima, Ohio. I know I didn't get to meet too many of you last weekend, but that's okay. Oh, I know it is. What what was that? Soaring Eagle Radio. That's who you are. Well, I don't want to get too hyped up on all of that fun stuff, except again, Dr. Mike and Kathy, thank you for being the gracious host and hostess and having us at uh, your home Saturday night, and we sure enjoyed uh, attending church there on Sunday. Just a blessing to hear uh, Dr. Mike preach and uh, meet all the great people there in that congregation that we had the opportunity to speak to. Kathy and I really enjoyed it. We're looking forward to the time to going back and we're sure hoping that uh, we can have the uh, live conference coming up in July. I'm going to start promoing that uh, when Dr. Mike's ready, but I'm letting everybody know that'll be a great conference, you know, once again. And with uh, David and Daniel, we, we were kind of left off, and during the break, actually, we were, we were had a, almost a whole nother segment of the program if we recorded <laughs> yeah. that. It would, been, <laughs> yeah, it would have been really good, too. But what, what we were talking about, and I think it's really critical, and what I mentioned in the, the last segment is that we're going to take and, and talk a little bit more about that church in Romania, uh, how that we see there that, uh, and if I'm correct, it was more of the Eastern Orthodox uh, that was in Romania, so different than the Roman Catholic, although there were Roman Catholics. It's pretty there, much but, the same, except they don't follow the Pope. I mean, that's right. Almost. But, it, you know, they, they follow, I forget what they call the, they the their own you know, head bishop yeah. there, but it was the, you know, so either Eastern Orthodox, and Eastern Orthodox is peculiar in its own way in, in all of that, and yet, you know, you had, uh, you know, spies there within that that were tied to the government and then what we were talking about is that in the mainstream evangelicals you're just wondering what is going on and why why are they uh accepting like the gospel coalition is just and and when we look at the southern baptist convention and we look at a lot of the others they're just wrapping their arms around the, all of this insanity uh the mm. the uh all of a sudden, I'm having a brain slip, and uh, Dan, you could probably help me out. And and what is it the uh, with the uh, around the uh, oh gosh, the, I, see you're helping me a lot. Thanks a lot. Took the pressure out of He's laughing at me. But, Sorry, but no, I'm, I'm having the same. Uh, yeah, yeah. Problem. But what it is is where the uh, it, it's that whole cultural expression. You know, we have to take oh, a yeah. pen. Social of, justice. You know, all the social justice stuff and everything like that. And, you know, the cancel culture. I mean, it, yes. it's really amazing yeah. that we have the mainstream churches that are doing that. And, and the only thing that always surprises me is that in the whole abortion movement, it seems like the Catholic Church does a whole lot more than the evangelicals do. And that is totally surprising to me uh, with all that. But from that experience, you guys said that uh, at one point there were spies within the church there in Romania. Mm-hmm. I, my goodness, what, what what do you see here as we were kind of talking on that break? What, what the heck is going on with the churches in America? And, and again, mention the movie, if you mm-hmm. will, that we talked about. Yeah. And then we were also talking about a pastor that's doing a eight part series. <laughs> yes. So. What, Our friend uh, Austin Hetzler, uh, he's a pastor at Christ the Rock Church. Yeah. And so where are they? Christ, in Illyria. Yeah, if you go to ChristTheRockChurch.com, I believe so. um, and you can find the series. But um, he's uh, really tackling what's going on right now, biblically. You know, not just his his opinion or, or um, uh, righteous anger, you know, that mm-hmm. we all feel at times. Sure. Uh, he wanted to actually do a series uh, 
you know, biblically uh, addressing every issue. I mean, we're talking mask, uh, you know, anything, and not, not just that, but yeah, communism. Uh, one thing, for example, he explains is how, um, you know, the devil takes something moral and he t he puts a twist on it because the devil, that's what he does. It's a lot of truth with just some lies in there. So right. um, he, he takes the moral thing like, uh, you know, now with the mask thing is like, you know, you should care about others, not yourself. Don't be selfish. You're wearing that mask not to protect yourself. You're wearing it to protect others. Mm -hmm. And that messed up people in their heads. And um, now they're shaming people that are not um, – yeah. They don't want to wear it. They're saying, well, you don't care about others. You're you're not respecting us. You know, all this stuff, it's all shame um, uh, bullying. And, and bullying and, and, and fear-based um, stuff. Mm -hmm. And and who, like, is, is we got to ask ourselves now, America and, and Christians especially, where does fear come from? Mm -hmm. Is it from God? Yeah. No. No. It's And, and lies, right. confusion, misinformation. Is this yeah. from God? All the stuff you're seeing yeah. happening right now? Right. No. It, it the Bible clearly goes against all this, so um, we have to wake up and say, you know say whatever's happening, this is not right. It's just not mm -hmm. from God, and and the gathering of the people that should never be forsaken, no matter right. what happens. Yeah, you, you need to gather, and and that's how you fellowship with each other. Uh, a lot of Christians have been staying almost a year now at home, mm -hmm. watching stuff on the screen. That's not right. the real church. No. Uh, yeah. and, and it's, it, it's gone too long. It, pastors yeah. need to address this. They need to wake up yeah. and say, mm -hmm. something is definitely wrong. Let's talk about this. We're not yeah. just going to make it nice for everybody. And, you know, the truth well, sometimes hurts. Correct stuff. Yeah. Sometimes hurts, but you need to say it. And, and that's so it. let's tie that back a little bit from your, your life and experiences in Romania. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to, you know, just tie some of that together is that, so when we look at your ability to worship, and what the activities of the church were there during that communist mm -hmm. regimes, they were kind of limited like that too. Were they? Did you have small gatherings, or there there were times where there may you know the government would say, "Oh no, you can't gather." I mean, give me a little ideas um, on that. They would they would let them gather. Mm -hmm. Um, so like I said before, they would let you have some freedom, so you don't say it's totally. And he would also want to let the West know. Oh, Romania is uh, very you know f uh, for the people yeah, where free. it's all freedom, and mm -hmm. you know they, he didn't want to have a bad reputation outside. So right. certain things he would he would allow. But uh, like I said, uh, a lot of pastors, uh, missionaries went to jail. So, I mean, yeah. you know, they were persecuted. They were beaten, tortured. I mean, if you, uh, you yeah. know, uh, Richard Vrumbrand, the, the Romanian guy, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that he was, he was, you know, tortured for Christ. He, he yeah. has a thing and he has the voice, the Mars, sure. Mars thing. But yeah, um, there was a lot of people that went through really, really tough times. And we got yeah. our house um, at one point raided uh, yeah. by the police. It was uh, our phones. I know they were listening on and, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff. So My father opened up the walls and saw that there was bugs in the walls as well. Yeah. And, and they weren't cockroaches. No. no. <laughs> it was the, we wish. <laughs> Worst kind of bugs. Yeah. <laughs> They're a different type of cockroach. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, well, you, yeah. yeah so, the pastors, yeah. you know, that spoke the truth and they would stand up, they would have trouble, uh, but they yeah. did it anyways, you know. Sure. Sure. And, and there are people uh, getting baptized in secret. Yeah. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's going to be real interesting to see what happens because we're seeing, you know, we knew that there was going to be a lot of onslaught. Because the uh, a lot of the people that are being uh, installed into this new administration uh, hate Christianity. They're they're definitely off into the uh, I call the Sodom and Gomorrah side of the yeah. of things, and not just because of their sexual behaviors, but because of their whole mindset. That's yeah. a mindset as much as it is anything else. And when we you know think about that and and <clears throat> all of the things that thankfully. We, you know, what we hope for and we pray for is that federalism will operate and that the states, and as we look at uh, how do we maintain our state, that we can fight back on that individual state basis. And that's going to be a real critical component as to like Texas is already lining up, you know, they're ready to throw lawsuits down. Mm -hmm. You know, hopefully we'll start, we can push on uh, our state to do the same and rebut some of the insanities that may come out of the federal government. So we have a little bit different scenario here 
uh, in the United States from just being one country in the way that it was in Romania, that here, if we really look at uh, how the structure is, we hopefully as a people, say the people of Ohio, can stand up and yes. say, whoa, time out. You know, federal government, you know, back off. You're not going to be able to institute that. But as there, as you guys mentioned earlier, they're all about the money. You know, it's all about, hey, you know what, uh, we, we'll, we'll give in here and there so we can get that cash flow. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so it'll, it'll, that's all going to be interesting. But I think it's going to be also interesting is that what you were saying earlier, what will the churches do? And we know that from that true liberty perspective, those as your friend that is preaching that word, it's, it'd be interesting to see how his congregation is really responding to that and what they're going to take and how they're going to apply that you know, more daily in their lives and say, wait a minute, how's that for my job? Because I've heard Christians uh, at a Bible study that are, actually was a church, um, you know, Sunday school type of scenario. This one guy was, oh, yeah, I work. They're, you know, they're telling me I can't have this on my desk. I can't do that. I can't do this. And it was like, uh, excuse me, what are you standing up on your beliefs? You know, what, what do you mean? They're telling you you can't have that. Well, I need my job. Well, really? You know, so it gets to that point. Oh, that yeah. You guys oh, are yeah. setting the example. Your dad said, you know, you, your mom, yeah. you know, to be able to understand those pieces that are you going to stand up for Christ knowing that uh, what's more important? Yeah. You know, and it's like the things that I, I was very frustrated with. I just resigned from our mental health board here in the county because to what you guys are saying, these other people are so confused. I call them the psycho babblers, and I'm you know not bashful about doing that. <laughs> is that they're amoral, so their their morality is within the context of their humanism, and what that does is it voice then you know allows for the immorality to take and move through all of society yeah. as they pretend that they can help people, mm-hmm. and we know that the gospel is the only thing, except for those that have medical issues. I would say that they need some additional help, you know, from that side of things. But those that are emotionally distraught, I mean, we're, we're, we read at the beginning some Psalm of David, and that was a personal cry as much as it was, you know, God crying, out, who's going to stand up against evil? You know, so I think that's what your family, you know, lived through and did uh, in Romania. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're, what, do you th- what do you think? Let's just talk Northeast Ohio. That's where we are, and hopefully the rest of Ohio, because I know Dr. Mike down there in Lima, they're standing up. Nice. Mm-hmm. But the, the, what do you think is going to happen in Northeast Ohio when we look at that in these last couple of minutes? How is the church is going to respond from your experience, you know, from Akron to Lake Erie? Well, I think, um, I mean, there's they got to stand up. They they can't just give in and just close down and, you know, um, they need to, um, be informed and, uh, band together and keep open because that's the only way we can continue. It's, um, I, we're seeing, we're seeing some churches standing up and some of them that are usually bigger, uh, just folding and it's a sad to see. So, Go ahead. It's it's. It, I think it's a, a lack of knowledge and mm-hmm. education um, on on understanding what's happening, uh, what's behind all this. You know, mm-hmm. uh, so they just they're they're just going along with um, thinking that you know the experts know. You know, they're they've been told. You know, this is mm-hmm. science. This is experts. If you don't believe in this, you're not believing in science. Again, they're using mm-hmm. instead of God is. He's the one that made science, and he's all about science. I mean, you know, science so, means yeah. with knowledge. But right. again, they hijack different. You know, they they, they split it where right. um, it's it's uh, very hard to see that. But we just need to to let people know and, and talk to them. The pastors, I'm trying to call pastors and and letting them know, yeah. hey guys, some some bad stuff could be coming, and you need to address this thing to the people. Right. Yeah. Um, like I, I just saw an article, Fauci was saying that. Um, uh, we're going to be able to sing in church by mid-fall. Yeah. If 
uh, 70 to 80 some percent get the vaccine. Oh my. Yeah. I, I just did an article. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Cause I, I heard of a uh, deacon's wife would not go back to church until the vaccine was available. Mm -hmm. So fear kills. We know that, but Paralyzed. Jesus is liberty. Yeah. It paralyzes, and and we know that uh, we have to stand up and do the right things. I think you know, just finishing up with that concept out of uh, Psalm ninety four is that we have to know that God is ultimately going to be supreme. He is supreme. He's going to reign, Amen. and that we Amen. need to move with Him. So everybody, come on back next week when Sam Adams returns and those anti federalists get it right.